Okay, let's see what we have here. Tom and Juji challenged Anton and I to uh, try a uh, iron cross. We're challenging Magnus Mitlo. We're challenging Anton Fomenko. I've tried it before, and I mean, I don't know. I was, I think I was pretty close. Come on, go. What? But I want to do like a proper one and I want to train it. Uh, so thank you, Juji and Tom, for uh, the rings. The gyms have been closed for months now. Um, it's uh, currently minus 10 degrees Celsius outside. So these are the rings. Look really nice. I mean, I've seen Anton's video where he tries this, so I already know how they look like. They're easy to adjust. The problem with rings always is to, f is to make sure that both rings are the same height. So that's why there are numbers on the side here, which make them really easy to fix. So I'm just gonna put them up in uh, like a pull-up bar behind me here. I was pretty close to doing it, but I wanna do a uh, even cleaner uh, iron cross. I don't think that's gonna happen today. So I'm gonna train this and then in a couple of uh, months, I will do another video where I actually try to, to do an iron cross, like a proper one. So it's a little bit easier if you have them fixed to one point instead of them like sliding out. So I had to fix everything to one sling. I think they also say that uh, the shorter the distance, the easier it is. So uh, this is like pretty short, so I guess it's a little bit easier, but it's good for practicing. So I'm just gonna do like a little bit of warming up and then start trying it. But I'm gonna start really careful. It's, uh, it's been a while since I did this. It's been a while since I did slings at all. That's okay, actually. Now what they say is uh, it's a lot easier if you use a false grip. So if you grip the ring in here instead of out here, that makes quite a big difference. So of course, that's what I'm gonna do. And today I actually forgot my chalk, so there's no chalking today. And after this, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna collect all slabs of the week and uh, show you guys. Because, uh, I don't know, I promised that in the last video. So you want to hold the ring uh, not like this, but like this far in. Okay, attempt number one. I just pray I won't get injured because the last four months or something I've trained uh, probably around five or six times. It's not an excuse, but uh, keep that in mind. I'm a little bit afraid of going too hard. Oh. <laughs> It's so hard to judge for yourself how it looks like from the outside because when I'm there, it feels pretty good, but my arms can definitely be more straight. But I don't know, it feels, I mean, I feel like I'm pretty close. So I think just with a little bit of practicing, I think I'll have it. And right now it's like minus 10 degrees too. So it's really cold. Not that that makes a difference, but I mean, training outside now, it's, it's not very pleasant, but that's the only option. And then I'm gonna hopefully do a video where I, uh, like a full video where I show you how I would train for an Iron Cross, even though I'm no expert when it comes to training uh, gymnastic stuff. So, uh, but I'm gonna do some research. Okay, attempt number two. I don't know, how does that look like? You guys should comment below uh, on my form. I don't know what it takes to do a clean iron cross. Do you need to hold it for like two seconds, three seconds, five seconds? And also how straight uh, do your arms have to be? Okay, last attempt. Oh, 
<laughs> it's, uh, it's so painful. Like Anton said in his video, this is a very good way to get injured. Everything hurts. It's not a very healthy exercise. And I think even gymnasts, they don't really train this too much because uh, there's a high risk of injury. Okay, so I've been looking forward to this, uh, making the slab of the week uh, video. I've collected all the slabs of the week since the very beginning and actually this is how the wall used to look like. There wasn't even a slab of the week wall to begin with. And what I'm going to show you now is the first slab of the week I ever filmed. So now you can see the wall looks a little bit different. Um, and this was the first slab of the week I filmed, but it was not the first slab of the week. We built this wall because there was a national bouldering competition and we had to put up a slab wall here. And then ever since then, this just became the slab of the week wall. There's a new bowler here every Thursday. And if you do the problem, you write your name on a list. And uh, every week we pick a random name from the list. And uh, there's like a little prize for the winner. And it's become quite a uh, social thing. Uh, when you go to the gym uh, while uh, it's open, I usually film all my uh, videos when it's closed, but if you go to the gym while it's open, you see large groups of people gathering in front of the slab of the week. Because as I've said before, uh, on slabs we're pretty much all the same. I mean, regardless of how strong you are and how hard you climb, you can always try slab of the week. And I mean, you might get lucky because it's all about technique. So this one here, I think might be my favorite slab of the week. It's very simple. I mean, it's not simple, but it's, I mean, basically just two big volumes. And the only way you can climb this is uh, by facing out. I think there's no other way to climb this. If you face in towards the wall, you have no chance. And it looks like I'm so close to the top, but you have to turn around and that's what makes it hard uh, to grab that top hold. Here's uh, another one, uh, starting with a double thumb catch. Uh, very small holes, but decent footholds, which makes it a lot easier on slabs. If you have good footholds, you don't really need anything to hold on to with your hands. This next one I uh, filmed with Eric Carlson and uh, Thor and Emil. That's when they came to Oslo. And the easiest way for me to make videos is uh, just by doing collabs with different people. And this year has been very difficult uh, because I'm not allowed to travel and other people are not allowed to travel. So I don't know, there's not been a lot of collabs this year, but hopefully things are gonna open up soon and uh, allow for travel again. And I guess, I mean, I think I'll be a lot more inspired when I have uh, just a lot of people to make videos with. That's the, for me, that's the most fun way to make videos, just by, I don't know, meeting new people and uh, traveling and going to new gyms. And, and also I, I really look forward to just uh, this gym opening again, because it's been closed for months now and it was closed earlier as well. I don't know, it's difficult to make training videos when you don't have a gym to make the videos in. That was tricky, the jump was actually more tricky than I yeah, thought it would be. It didn't be. look that much like no. 7A, it looked... Uh, uh, maybe a little bit harder. harder. Yeah. I thought like what you said about like strong climbers that try to pull <laughs> yeah, too hard. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> go for it. I also felt like <laughs> when the, it didn't work out really. <laughs> So I believe this was the winter of 2018. When I film stuff like this, I don't know if you guys noticed, but sometimes I cut the music and that's usually to create a little bit more drama, but I also don't want to reveal when I'm doing the bowlers. So I try to mix it up. 
but I feel like sometimes people can feel when I'm about to send it's just because the music stops. Come on. Yes! Woo. Yes! <laughs> Ending is so sketchy. <laughs> Slab of the week. Slab of the week. <laughs> Done. So this one was supposed to look like a Christmas tree. Uh, you see there's uh, green, red and white. And this was part of my uh, 100 bowlers for 100k subscribers. Uh, it's one of the longest videos I've ever made. And uh, I do all the bowlers in the gym and that's probably to this date, it might be the video that's taken me the longest to edit. I spent around uh, two weeks working on that video. So if you haven't watched it, you should go and watch it. There will be a link up in the right corner. And here's one I did with my sister. She's very good at slabs. I think she's uh, better than me at slabs. Getting moves hard. Come on. That looks really awkward. Yeah, nice, come on. Like slopey feet. Like right again? Yeah, I think so. Or maybe I crossed. I don't know. <laughs> and that's when the music cuts mm. to create a little bit extra drama. <laughs> yeah, it's strange. Come on, nice. Oh, it's so it's so com yeah, it's so compressed. Yeah. You only feel like you want to stand on the right one. I think, yeah, like this is better. Yeah. So on Slaps of the Week, you see yeah, there's nice. four pieces of tape. You need to start with uh, either your arms or your legs nice. where the tapes are. And that's the only bowler mm. we tape like this. And that's also how they tape bowlers in competitions. So when you see uh, four pieces of tape like this, that's where you have to nice. start. And this is, I mean, it looks pretty straightforward, but it's very just like sneaky. Uh, you have to feel the movements. Uh, you always have to make sure you're in balance. And that's why way. usually on slabs, you climb way slower than on powerful steep problems. Cause you have to always feel nice. the body positioning. I think I took like at least two tries in the first move though. So <laughs> you won that one. <laughs> I think we had the same. And I mean, some people might think that it's embarrassing to fail on a bowler that my sister have done, but uh, I don't think so at all. She used to be a uh, World Cup climber and I mean, she's very good at slabs, so uh, I don't feel any extra pressure when climbing with her. Uh, quite the opposite. So this slab is exceptionally hard. Only two people have done it. Can I be the third? So I don't think it looks so hard, but I know it's hard. As always, it's pretty technical. So it's been up for two days now, and only two people have done it. Is it graded? Do they even grade the? No, the they steps? don't. They don't grade it. So usually you just watch the list and uh, see how many people have done it. And you always know that the bowler is set on Thursdays. Depending on what day of week it is, the list should be like. I don't know. You can you can see it on the list. Yeah. you have to go slow to that. It's always so hard to figure these out 
But when you have the solution, it's so easy. Like if someone just told me how to do this, I think it'd be not too bad. But I'm not smart enough to figure it out myself. So this was from the first uh, date video I did with uh, Marta and uh, <laughs> I guess I tried to impress her with my slab skills. Uh, didn't really work. Do you want to try it with me? Uh, slabs were all the same, that's what I usually say. Oh. Yeah. I mean slabs is like, there's a lot of skill involved but not so much strength. Usually it's from, it's from 6A to 7B. So I can first try it and see how hard it is this mm -hmm. time. And I call this video Normal Girl Tries Climbing or something. And since then, <laughs> there's a lot of videos on YouTube with uh, Normal Girl Tries Climbing. And it's become kind of like a code word for a girlfriend, I guess, which is nice to see. It's tricky. It's actually a lot trickier than I thought it would be. And yeah, I also get mad if I don't do stuff. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I'm like laughing as if it's <laughs> really easy. Yeah, it's always nice to see someone else struggle with yeah. struggle yourself. <laughs> I get it. And this was actually the first time Marte climbed at all. And uh, I don't know, a lot of people commented on the videos that uh, that she must have tried climbing before because she was pretty good at it for a beginner. But uh, I promise you, she has never climbed before. Yeah. Nice. That's what you call a one move bowler. So only one hard move. But if you're trying to impress a girl, I guess uh, slabs is not the, not the way to go. At least not for me. Shirt comes off on the first problem already. Here's uh, one of my favorites. This is a sliding bowler. You're supposed to slide down that dual texture volume. That's how you're supposed to do it. Look at all the skip marks. The first time you try it, it feels so difficult. And then if you just do it once, you can do it over and over again. And I'm kind of afraid of my chin there. Uh, I did it a couple of times after I stuck it just because I wanted to get different angles. So and uh, cool. then it felt so much easier. And I also put on like a Super Mario effect because uh, I felt like this, it felt like a video game. I'm gonna try it again, just for the fun of it. It's kind of like the slab. Sometimes I feel like it's I don't know, kind of lucky when you do it, but I want to master this. So I want to do it again. So something that felt uh, impossible the first time I tried it, just after a few tries, felt uh, very easy. And that's a really fun thing about slabs. Like when you've done them once, they feel so easy. Especially coordination stuff like this. I'll try to cheat it too, just to see if that works. Kind of skipping this one. And unfortunately with problems Seems like this, it sometimes it's easier to skip the sequence intended. And that, I guess, was the case with this bowler. You could just skip the sliding part. Yeah, that works too. But I actually think the sliding thing is a little bit easier. And it's way cooler. But it was almost as easy, or if not easier, to do the sliding thing, so it still worked. This was shot pretty recently, and uh, I think this is one of the problems that looked the easiest, but felt the hardest. Oh. <laughs> Just 
not to laugh, but I don't even warm up for this. No warming up. I think that one is like a warm up. <laughs> it was more sneaky than it looked like. And uh, you have to do a lot of different moves, even though it's not a it's not a very long problem. You do a lot of small foot movements and hand movements and adjustments and. It's just, it's exhausting to climb a bowler like this because you feel like you wrestle up the whole bowler. Like you were doing some quick step dance on top of that. This is not a good start. I think that's why we always do it at the end. The thing is like you feel so stiff in the beginning of the session but... Mm -hmm. So here you see again there's four pieces of tape and it's not always so obvious where to start or how to start. Like you don't know if you're supposed to have two feet and one hand on the volume or one foot on the other hold and two arms on the volume. Like it's not easy to, to always know how to start. And that's also the case in competitions. Sometimes you see people starting with a foot on the handhold and also the other way around. Yeah. There we go. Yay! I think that means good luck though when you mess up the first bowler like that. You think that means good luck? Yes. I was gonna say the opposite, but, the, or I'm just, I'm, no. But since you, at least it was good that you finished it. I think. So here's the most, maybe one of my, I'm not gonna call it underrated, but it didn't get a lot of views and I thought it was a pretty good video. Uh, it's uh, a video where Marta has a laser pointer and she's uh, pointing at the holes that I'm allowed to use. Is that this is taken from Sims. All the Sims fans out there. <laughs> Sims? Do you know what Sims is? Sims, like the game? The game, yeah. Oh, really? So they have these things on their heads. Uh -huh. Stand on top of this green one and hold your hands, yeah, on that orange one. You're gonna have to jump with both your arms and your feet to the other side. You have to catch it with this orange one and your yeah. feet on this one. So jump. You have to catch the orange one yeah. with your right right hand and then put your right hand right foot first and then jump over and get the right foot here and left foot there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so I'm not allowed to move until she yeah. points at a hold. Also foot holds. Um, I can't do anything unless she points at the hold. We did this for her to get a better understanding <laughs> of yeah. how to and move. So she is basically remote controlling me. And I tried to do the same thing with her and it's actually a lot more difficult than I thought it was. Oh no, and you have to catch the orange one with your left hand? Because everything is so intuitive when you climb. You don't really think about what you're doing. I don't know, it's a good practice, I guess, to do this. And uh, kind of, I think it turned out to be a pretty funny video. So if you haven't watched it already, you should definitely go and watch it. <laughs> Okay, jump, put your right hand here, left, yep, oh yeah, come on, and you work yourself up here with your hands, put your, no, take your foot down again, okay, yep. put your hand up here, match, oh you can't match, oh jeez, okay, you're just, oh, yep, uh, uh, left arm on this one, uh, left foot here. This is also probably, I mean, the most frustrating video I've made because, I don't know, I had to climb so slow and I got in some pretty weird positions. And this wasn't the only problem we did uh, with the laser pointer. We did a bunch of other problems in the gym as well. So I'm not allowed to say anything. She has to figure this out on her own. Yeah, and then left on top. And foot here, right foot here. Left arm here. And right arm there. <laughs> the last part. I could have jumped down this way. How would you do this, it? This, this, and this. Oh, okay. 
This is when I did uh, the video with uh, Marcus, the gymnast. And this slab is more physical than the other slabs. Okay, so the list of people this week is really short. And that means it's really hard this week. See how small the footholds here are. Like, tiny, they're not even in cuts. They're slopey and bad. Okay, you see the upper holes have no, like no chalk. Mm. And that's because not many people have gotten that far. Okay. Oh, this is hard. Well, this one is actually better than I thought, so... The feet were really bad, so you had to pull really hard on uh, the tiny crimpers. And I guess if it was more technical, it would have suited Marcus, gymnast, better. It's better if I am back? Yeah. Just try to stay close to the wall. And what you usually do, like... It's not good for your fingers, but on, on these kind of holes, you want to lock the crimp. So you put your thumb like this. And that's a really bad position. It's easy to get injured, but it gives you a little bit of extra power because you help with your thumb. And in the video after this one, I tried gymnastics with Marcus. And uh, that's also the video where I tried uh, the Iron Cross. And I think it would be fun to do more gymnastic videos. I definitely think uh, that would benefit my climbing. I'd like to be able to do like a handstand and uh, a backflip. I've tried to backflip a few times, but I still can't do it. Uh, so it'd be cool to, to kind of master that as well as, of course, the Iron Cross. So this is also from a pretty recent video. Uh, it's where my back kind of looked like a heart. I don't know why, I've never seen that on my back uh, before. And I think it's because this is not a very common move in climbing. And it's also the video where I tried the magic pull up. And this move, this going again move is, is pretty cool. That was a weird top match. I feel like that's so typical. Almost flashing it and then not being able to do it again. Probably a lot of you can relate to this. When you have one good flash burn where you're like really psyched and then the second go you just you relax way too much because you think you're gonna do it easily and then you just fail. That's what happened here because I'm like too relaxed. And this is a cool one. As you run up, you have to catch the left toe. The slab of the week is pretty creative this week. Even just starting, the starting position is really awkward. So the reason why I haven't uploaded so many videos lately is just because I haven't had many video ideas. It's hard to make videos these days and that's also why I make this video of old clips. I hope that things will start to open up again and I don't know, maybe travel a little bit again, at least in Norway. I don't know how the root setters always come up with such like creative bowlers. This one looks like a jump. Oh, oh okay, you jump in there. Okay. And it's really hard to set a slab like this because as a root setter you have an idea of how you want the bowler to be done but then it's it's hard to force that you know wow. usually there's an easier way that you haven't thought of but the root setters at this gym are very good at uh, forcing you to do it the way they want the bowler to be done and uh, that's why root setting is it's it's more than just a, like a profession it's like I don't know it's like like art and it takes a lot of time to become good at root setting. Oh. Oh, such a weird one. It's just tricky. It's just like a like a skating trick. Like doing a kickflip on a skateboard. That's how this feels like. Oh the heel. You have to change it from a toe hook to a heel hook.
So I think this was one of the more creative boulders I've ever climbed. And here's another really creative one. Maybe the most creative, actually. So you see, on this boulder, you have to start where the hands are with your hands. Mm. That's what makes it so tricky. <laughs> and I'm pretty bad at handstands, so... Yeah, that surprises me. I remember you said that. That's... Yeah. Uh... But I don't, know, I don't know why people expect climbers to be good at handstands. Well, it's not core is really important. And also, you, yeah. you have strong arms and shoulders and... Oh my god. No, no, no. <laughs> this is a really dangerous bowler. Like what if you your hands collapse and you like <laughs> hit yourself. Yeah. That's the day two. Yeah. And after I uploaded this video, I, I saw a lot of other so people much. trying to copy this bowler <laughs> and uh, it's pretty hard. <laughs> like it's easy to set a bowler like this if you only try it this way, but to set a bowler that's Impossible to do any other way. That's yeah. really, really difficult. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> Here's another one that looked really, really easy. I uh, wanted to warm up on it, but it was harder than it looked like. Usually when I look at a steep problem, I can tell pretty much how hard it is. Um, but when I look at a slab, it can be anything from 5A to 8A. It's impossible to save from the ground. It's not a good idea. <laughs> I would not warm up on this bowler if it was like a crimpy, like gnarly crimpy bowler. But this is so slopey, it doesn't really matter. A nice problem should, of course, always climb really well. Like how it climbs is the most important, but how it looks is also pretty important. Usually they use kind of the same type of holds. So there's like a theme to the bowler and uh, the volumes are sometimes placed so that they make into like a, uh, a kind of cool looking shape. Like there's a lot of ways to make a bowler look really nice. But of course how it climbs is the most important. Nice. But I feel like a lot of these slaps uh, have both. They look really nice, so like when you see the bowler, you immediately want to get on it and try it. And they're also nice to climb. Oh, I hit my chin. It's a weird start. Now this was the weird one. I, I actually forgot most of these bowlers. Uh, but this one was with the tricky top match. So the top hold is like basically nothing. And that was completely unexpected. Uh, when I looked at it from the ground, it did not look like it would be very difficult to match the top hold. But um, that turned out to be the crux. You just have to find the body positioning. That top pole is like nothing. So you need to rely completely on just your feet. And it's hard to like read it from the ground. You don't really see anything from the ground. So you just have to climb it and kind of feel the body positioning. So the first move, I tried to go slow the first few times, but the key is to go fast and then switch the left hand as you go. And the start move was also pretty hard. Like usually when I do a move once, I can do it many times easily afterwards. But this was different. I don't know what's going on. I feel pretty strong today, actually. I think sometimes with slabs, when you feel strong, you do worse on slabs, just because you try to pull your way up instead of feeling. On most slabs, you shouldn't really have to like use strength. You should just feel instead. Feel the movements and the body positioning and and I trust your feet. And I think part of the reason was because I forgot to uh, to brush the hold enough. Like when the holes are really slopey like this, friction is so important. And also slab of the week usually is easier just after it's set because then the friction is better. And then as the days go on, it becomes harder and harder because there's more chalk and rubber on the holes. Okay, so the key was to stand low on these holes. 
First time I tried to put my foot all the way up here, that didn't work. Oh, that's okay, so I only have one problem left, and this was shot with a cell phone. Um, it was shot while I was training for a TV show in Norway called Mastanas Masta, Champion of the Champion. And uh, on the dual texture, it's really hard to stand with a shoe, with a climbing shoe, with rubber. So on this problem, you had to take off your right shoe to stand on the dual texture just barefoot. And that made it a lot easier. So for once, a sweaty foot felt more sticky than a climbing shoe. So that was the last lab of the week. I uh, hope to make uh, more outdoor climbing vids, um, even though it's like really cold outside. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.